Culture, as presented by Ian Sanchez, Joaquin Hernandez, Justin Valencia, and Enrique Zermeno. The 1960s was a period of great change in the United States, primarily for the youth. During this time, the grand majority of American teenagers held nonconformist ideals, and their collective unity came to be known as the counterculture. In essence, the counterculture did not adopt mainstream styles, but rather their own unique versions, as well as deny the values that defined the previous generations. One of the main goals that the counterculture movement had was the advertisement of peace, as reflected by the politically active side in which wars were rebelled against and many young Americans defined the military drafts. The counterculture, whose members are now colloquially known as hippies, are remembered for their eccentric styles, values, and behaviors. Their sense of fashion changed drastically, including the shifts towards vibrant and spirited color schemes, as they began experimenting with their own sexuality and perceptions of society, but more so through the popularity of drugs. They also did, adopted new music tastes, which assisted in defining a new era of the youth. In essence, this style was meant to reflect a sense of peace and freedom, both substantial values that the politically activist side held. The youth of the 1960s embraced a, a colorful, electrifying, and vivid style. They began to dress in much more radical clothing, which helped characterize the popular hippie schema known today. Their clothing represented their free spirit, which was defined by loose-fitting, occasionally oversized, and colorful nature of their fashion. Their hairstyles varied tremendously as well, from long, uncut trims to musky and frivolous tops. The members of the counterculture did not only express their vibrancy through their clothing, but their values were also reflected through their vehicles, bodies, and art styles, such as op and pop art. The demand for a new lifestyle grew imminent throughout this era. Many of the members of the counterculture proposed new views of sexual conduct, which many learned to adopt. They yearned for the extinguishment of traditional limitations, which led to their newfound behavior being labeled the sexual revolution. Through this, sexual subjects, euphemisms, and behavior became more widespread throughout media. Many popular books of this time revolved around the topic of sex and similar relations. In essence, this meta-revolution promoted the popularity of sexual topics and discerned the abolishment of the previous perspective that held sex as being tied to family life. Psychedelic drugs grew immensely popular during the counterculture movement. LSD and marijuana became the most used drugs during this time, but this was not with the intent of destructive behavior. Psychedelics became popular as members of the counterculture wished to experiment with abstract and alien substances. They were also being used in a laboratory setting, as Timothy Leary, a Harvard University researcher, acknowledged that these drugs could help free the mind. However, this experimentation came with grave consequences, as many of the users paid the ultimate price due to the overdoses. The popularity of drugs during this time helped promote their dangers for the generations that followed. The world of music was a huge contribution towards the cultural changes of this time. Similar to the 1950s, the members of the 1960s grew intrigued by music of rebellious nature, such as songs that stimulated protests and conveyed strong feelings, but also favored music directed towards the common person at the time. Bands such as the Beatles and the Rolling Stones heavily influenced the culture of this era, as it promoted peace either directly or through the protests of oppression. Music festivals grew popular at this time too, with Woodstock and Altamont being events of the year. However, many Americans perceive these festivals as being immoral and disturbing due to the radical nature of these events. Violence would break out at these festivals as well, which essentially meant that this era grew in the introduction, the activist side of the counterculture held values of both peace and freedom. Activists expressed these values through the defiance of military drafts and war. They viewed these topics as being unnecessarily destructive, or as enemies against peace. Not only that, but many of these activists protested against the mainstream traditions that were popular in the preceding generations. College students would assist in the push for civil rights women and women's rights through the protest. Anti-poverty organizations were being supported by members of the counterculture. Overall, the activism that marked the counterculture was driven by the motivation to abolish the oppression against the movement, and it succeeded in exemplifying the power of civil protest for later generations. Many Americans that opposed the counterculture movement viewed it as a rejection of traditions and morals. These, those that favored it viewed it as an expression of their newfound values, which coincidentally happened to be through the experimentation of abnormal activity and rebellious behavior. In the end, though, this era marked a great change in the culture of the United States during the 1960s, with its lasting effects having imprinted an example that nonconformity shouldn't always be destructive for society today.